what are some financial fundamentals you would say, okay, if you want to launch your career off mm -hmm. into the world of real estate investing, mm. and we're, we're, we're being very clear about it, because I got a video on my YouTube channel called 10 Reasons Why I Chose Real Estate, 10 Reasons Why I Chose Insurance Versus Real Estate. Mm from a realtor standpoint yeah. versus an insurance agent standpoint. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is a different story. This is being yeah. a real estate investor. Yes. So what are some basic financial equipment one should have and say, okay, if this is yeah. something I want to go down, let me get down a real estate investing route. Mm. Here's some basic financial fundamentals. What are they yeah. in today's, today's and, and by the way, I'm a real estate guy. Mm -hmm. Like I consider myself mm -hmm. to be a real estate expert. If I had to choose between being an insurance agent and a real estate agent, I would choose insurance. How come? Because I'm convinced you actually learn more about personal finances, generational wealth, you learn more about how the market works yeah. if you are in the insurance industry. Because people don't understand how much insurance affects our markets, <laughs> yeah. how much insurance affects our you know, investment, capital markets, labor markets, you name it. Yeah. And again, not a knock against realtors, right? I have realtor friends that make $50,000 a year, they drive great cars, they have great careers, and I, you know, they do a great service. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, if you're a real estate agent, um, you take a course, you, you get licensing, you, you learn all the laws within just that industry. You don't really go beyond. And at the end of the day, your number one skills is sales. You know, you don't really go outside right. the housing market. Uh, yeah. But when you're an insurance agent, you learn so much more than just about the insurance industry because the insurance industry is so tied to so many different things. Yeah. So between me and you, like I, that's actually my personal preference. I would actually choose, I would actually agree with you on that one. You know that I would I would totally be an insurance agent over a real estate agent. Interesting thing there too is uh, there's also that that uh, cousin uh, peanut butter and, re and jelly relationship with between real yes. estate. Yeah. And I mean, right here in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, the biggest uh, namesake buildings, largest high, yeah. you know, biggest build namesake buildings in downtown Chicago, are owned by yes insurance companies. Yeah. I mean, you look at Willis Tower. I, I ask people all the time, "What's Willis? What's the <laughs> biggest? No. What what does Willis do? Yeah. I don't know." Guess what they do? Yeah. They do insurance. You know, you pass up Trump Tower, you go down, you see another building there in uh, Gold Coast. That's John Hancock. Yep. What did John Hancock do? I don't know. It's insurance. insurance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> MetLife, you name it. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. A Prudential building downtown. Sure. Insurance. You yeah. know, uh, Aon building, uh, Mil Millennium Park. Mm -hmm. Insurance. Um, Bread building downtown, CNA. Insurance. Yeah. I mean, the largest buildings in most iconic buildings, even in downtown Chicago, are yeah. insurance. And you go to New York. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. San Francisco. Same thing. So a lot of people don't understand. Like, so there's a, you know, insurance loves real estate. Real estate loves insurance. Insurance. And it, it, you know, it just it happens that way because a lot of times we made it. We just made a video about this on Monday. How both of these are, they stand the test of time. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they they're hedged against inflation. Yeah. You know, they increase, they decrease. It's one of the those two things are the most powerful financial instruments I believe in America. But yet for some reason. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. our schools don't teach that. Of course not. Right? Yeah. We teach we teach accumulation as opposed to cash flow. It would the schools you know? teach us go to college, get student uh, loan debt, and hopefully get a job when you get out. But you're saddled with for sure that. And progress says, yeah. You know, the borrower is ensla enslaved to the lender. Yes. You know, and so we're setting up our kids for that. Yeah. And by the way, I've got three older kids. Mm. I'll tell them, listen, your dad made his millions without a college degree. And if you want to go to college, no problem. Yeah. Here's how we'll pay for it. I'll pay for some of it. You got to pay for some of it too because I don't believe any. Yeah. Free education. But by, by the way, if you're if you're watching and you're an 18 year old kid or a 19 year old kid or you're young and you know, because I get that question a lot, I was yeah. like, Daniel, should I go? Because I'm a dropout. I dro I've dropped out my senior year of college. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and so people ask me, should I go to college? I I tell them, here's what I would do. If you're looking to be in business, f find somebody that that is doing what you're doing. Work for free during the nighttime. Audit certain college classes like accounting, yeah. business law, yeah. you know, um, management. Right. Like th there are certain you know, classes in college that are actually, I believe are worth it, right? But you're talking about knowledge and education versus the degree. I take education knowledge any day of the week. If I were to hire somebody today and then, you know, I had two guys, one person, hey, I got a college degree from Harvard. Mm -hmm. And the other person says, hey, I worked four years, you know, in this you know, industry and I worked, you know, I, I worked one year in each different office and mm -hmm. I worked for a property management firm. I worked for, you know, investment mm -hmm. firm and I got experience underwriting deals and I managed properties before. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, you know, audited accounting. Hire that kid right yeah. there on the spot. Yeah. On the spot. Right. Before anybody else takes him. Yeah. You know? So that, that'd be my message to 18, 19 year old kids for, for a lot of them to ask me like, Hey, how do I break into real estate? How can I eventually do what you're doing? Yeah. You know, um, you asked me a question about what are some financial principles for, for somebody starting out in real estate? Sure. Um, it's some financial equipment, you know, what yeah. type of tangible, um, tangible things should they have? Yes, absolutely. So one of the biggest myths is that, you know, people say that, Oh, I need money to do real estate. Oh, well, that's not true. I didn't have any. I didn't have any money. I had negative yeah, dollars. For right. sure. So what I did is I raised money. And people are always like, oh, I hate raising money. I hate asking people for money. 
that's not the, the perspective shift for a second, yeah. right? So I'll, I'll ask you a question. Matt, do you think there's more people in the United States that have a minimum of $150,000 that they're able to invest? Or do you think that there's people who actually know what the heck they're doing in the real estate investment game? Uh, the other side. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So in my observation, I, I, I choose to travel a lot. I still do, right? Pre, even pre-COVID, I was on like three, four flights a week traveling, to, talking about real estate. I, I came across a lot of different people. In my estimation, for every one person that actually knows what they're doing in real estate, that actually knows how to put together a business plan, build a team, hire a coach, et cetera, et cetera, there's probably about 50, 50 to 100 people that have at least $150,000 in their account that they're able to invest. Yeah. So if I have this opportunity, mm -hmm. it's a solid deal, right? What is more valuable, the opportunity or the money? Opportunity, yeah. It's the opportunity. Absolutely. So, for, you know, a lot, I, have, I have a student, you know, because I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for real estate. I have a student who raised, with that mindset shift, I, I gave her the mindset shift, and I also taught her a couple of techniques that we talk about in my inner circle. And she went out, knew nothing about real estate beforehand. She raised uh, she raised a million dollars in one week to do deals. It's incredible, yeah. you know? So for me, that's the mindset shift that we got to have. So there's three things. I call it the three-legged stools of real estate. Okay. Um, you got to have you got to have knowledge and guidance. So always have somebody in your corner that you could refer to, that you could ask. Always have a second pair of eyes. You know, always have the best books, the best podcasts, you know, which I, I mean, I got a book. I wrote a book, Zero to 75 Units in One Year. It's absolutely free. All they got to do is just go to zero to 75 units uh, in one year dot com. Um, we again, got a link here. Yeah, okay. perfect. Right. Yeah. It's, again, it's absolutely free. Uh, so knowledge and guidance. Other one is tools and resources. So understand what software is, what are the best things for you to utilize to be able to. And then last but not least, have the people and the resources. Yeah. So have your team, your capital lined up. If you could master these three things and if you sat down, if, and, and most most problems I feel like would be solved if people simply just sat down and took half hour to just map out what they want. Yeah. If they just literally sat down for 30 minutes and, and organized their thoughts, okay, three things I need here, I need from here, here, here. I'm convinced that people will do just fine. Yeah. As I wrap up, what, what are your your last thoughts? If somebody's watching our channel, they want to think like a millionaire, they want to strategize mm -hmm. like a millionaire, and they want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Yeah. And and, and understand the values and principles of making sure that it lasts the test of time. Mm -hmm. Up, down market, you know, craziness in economy, COVID, pandemic, lockdown, shutdown, anything. How would you what are your two cents and how would you guide them through that and building their wealth, building yeah. their enterprise? with God. Yeah. So that's a very interesting question. I, you know, typically a lot of people at this point would say, well, if you want to make a million dollars, help a million people, you know, and <laughs> I, I believe in that, by the way, I sure. absolutely do. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's a hundred percent truth, right? I mean, I can go to downtown Chicago yeah. and hand out hot dogs all day long and I can help a million people. It doesn't mean I'm going to make a million dollars. You know, the question that I would ask is what is the byproduct? What are the action steps that you're doing right now that is that is creating byproducts that is equaling to a million dollars? So I would say two things. Number one, uh, have what's known as your KPIs, your key performance indicators. Right. Okay. Set standards and expectations. What are the things that you should be doing every single day, every single week, every single month mm -hmm. to ensure your success? Most people fail because they have no idea what success even means. They have no ways of tracking and progressing. It right. It's one thing. It's just, just one thing. Yeah. Right. It, like most, thing, yeah. most people feel like, oh, like I'm going to one day get to a rooftop and say, I made it. Right. Like that never happens. That yeah. never happens. <laughs> you know, if you're doing it the right way, that day never comes because yeah. it's a, it's, it's constant battle. It's a constant struggle. You know, you know, you know, the word love um, in three different religions. So in Judaistic, uh, it actually means struggle. Love in Judaism, it actually means mm -hmm. struggle. In Islam, it, love actually means submission. In Christianity, love means sacrifice. So if you're talking about sacrifice, struggle, right, and uh, submission, do you think love? No, not at all. You know, not, like, people it, think torture. People think torture, <laughs> right, or some sick, twisted, you know, whatever, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, before we go down yeah. that path, key performance indicators, yeah. right? We, we got to have the discipline. My, my recommendation to go to somebody that you love, respect, that is doing what you're doing and ask them, what are some of the key performance indicators? What are some things that you did every single day, every single month, every single week that that you did to get to help help get to where you are right now? And what are some things that you would change? And do that with five, 10 different individuals and and, and, and then really think about what you're really good at. And so marinate that with what your talents are, what, mm -hmm. what today's market is, what people want. You know, Go out, collect data, ask people, what are some of the greatest problems that I can help solve for you right now? 
If you do all those things, you will have so much clarity in terms of what you should do today to help you become a millionaire. Um, it's a lot. It'll keep yeah. people busy yeah. for sure. 